All right, we'll start the meeting uh, for the North Bennington trustees. And uh, today is the 13th, is that right? It is. And we'll start the meeting by approving the minutes from the last meeting, which was December 9. We approve them as printed. We'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Next, the warrant for payment of the bills. I did have a question on that. I was going to ask Norm, but he's not here. So, Mary. Mm -hmm. um, I know Norm had picked up a wagon from somewhere um, and was doing some repairs to it. And I think for some reason, all of those supplies and repairs got charged to parks. That's what he asked us to do. Mm -hmm. That's what I figured. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I don't, okay. I don't understand do why he would I wouldn't assume that. But I can, have a, I can have a conversation with him about that. But Let us know when we make those adjustments. OK. We're going to pay for it somehow. There's been a whole lot of community to support and development and, and donations, but I'm not sure Parks is the, it seems to be the stepchild of the budget for, <laughs> yeah. for Norm. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I got a question, it's just a small amount, but on the, uh, for uh, the fountain and the Lincoln Square, yes. uh, I thought we agreed that the electricity would be Village yeah, expense, I, I marked maintenance. that just to make sure to okay. ask you, but that's it's the only way $21. It was in and didn't notice it until Rachel would not like to have it. <laughs> is that parks as well? Apparently, yeah, that's what you that's what you you had. Are we going to parks or would we go under regular street lights? I think it'd be the same as a street light or anything else. Well, it needs well, to go into a category. But so. we don't put we don't put the uh, power for the concession stand under street lights. We put we it put it parks. under parks. It's in the, the same group, shaft, but okay. it, it wouldn't. It's not a street light, so it wouldn't go there. Yeah. But it can go under the on the parks line. Well, I think we're getting about where we're going to have a discussion about all that. <laughs> I'm, Which is, I'm, you know, what, it's, it's smart to do that. We were just talking about yeah. earlier. It's smart to do that because it lets us know where. Yeah. It just pinpoints where the money is. Right. But if all these little things are going to be put in the park, then we've got to adjust what we have for a budget. And when we adjust, we've got to pull it from somewhere because yeah. we obviously the, are not going to make money. The over but. there, in the phone, and there isn't a phone anymore, always, because it's part of the park. It's the North Shaft Lions Park. So the electricity always has gone there. Yeah, but it's never been it's, it's never been counted against my budget though, which is kind of odd. Well, there's or it's two never been budgets for parts. Okay, so that's another thing. Sure, we can discuss that. <laughs> we can have that in our in our. Uh, I thought we I thought we changed that thing because there was one that was trees and parks. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. Okay, so the trees and parks is separate from the parks. Exactly. Where's parks? Oh, Parks is is really the budget <coughs> for which we donate a certain we put a certain amount in and the, and the town of Bennington, Bennington puts in, and that's the budget that Mark uses I for. Got an and I mean, I the, only the, have two accounts. right? The spirit of that money is is for park improvements, yeah. not to buy screws and nuts and bolts for a wagon. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, if I mean, it's a good time to start talking about it because we'll be in budget meetings anyway, and we can try to figure that out. Okay. Um, just another small question on the uh, the, the uh, electronic entries at the bottom. Uh, w are those uh, payroll entries or? The EFTPS, yes. Okay, so those are payroll. That's the, the, the withholding taxes that need to right. be remitted okay. to the federal. I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve. Uh, the warrant as presented for sixty-seven thousand nine ninety-seven. Or do you need a copy of the sign? Do we have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I'm gonna sign that one. Oh, I've got one. You've got, got one. Yeah. Okay. Um, the payroll warrant. Payroll warrant. 
Did you bring an extra copy of the payroll warrant? Yep. Because I did. Lori, did you send? Was it? Oh, actually, I sent the wrong one, right? No, I sent December and I sent January. Oh, I see. And the reason why we sent January you know, is because we're now um, that's a crappy pen. online with our payroll. <laughs> so, I've been sitting in my house for three years. So are we approving two payroll warrants? Yes. The old style. Yes, yes. And, okay. and we're getting to a point where you will be approving it in oh, advance of so that. Right, yeah. that's what that's and why we've never seen it. But, yeah. Yes. Okay. So the one I have is correct, and then yes. the second one, I didn't print out the second one, I didn't know there was a second one. I threw the other one away, thought. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> December is the one you would normally get, anyway, All right. it's a new one. Oh, well. Because we're online with our payroll. Uh, should we approve them separately, or? or? Okay. I think we have to. Yes. Okay, so if we looked at the dates, we would have realized that. that it's uh, <laughs> well, actually... The, the second one you sent also says, says December on it. December? That no, you did But didn't. it does say January at the end. It says January okay. at the end. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, accept the December payroll warrant. So moved. So moved. Was that a second? I'll second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the same for the uh, January? I'll move we accept it. I'll second. All those in favor? All right. Thank we could have Mark's copy to sign. <laughs> so here's a copy of that to sign. Uh, the next uh, item on the agenda is citizen comments, but you guys are also um, you're plugged into the agenda, so which we'll get to, I think, very quickly. But we'll do it that way. <coughs> Norm gave me a call at about 6.30 and he's been out on the road quite a bit the last few days and I think his teeth were chattering as he spoke to me so I suggested he stay home, which is unfortunate because I know it'd be important for him to be here for this too, but we'll, um, I'll bet he's watching and if there's any questions uh, that we can turn over to him or we can even call him if we need to. Um, Let's do treasurer's report, or do you want to even do that after? Well, the, unless it's quick. honestly the only I kind of merged the treasurer's report with the budget worksheet. Okay. But what I do have, if you want to talk about it now, we could. It's just where all the fund balances are. Sure. But if we want to reserve this for our budget and do it all at once, it may make more sense. Yeah, that may make more sense. Just yeah. during our work session, we can yeah. we can do that. Um. Well, then look at that. Uh, it's highway facilities report, and I will. <coughs> don't know what I can report on his behalf, other than there was a breakdown on the big truck. I think it was just a leaf spring, but it was something that put the truck out of commission for a few days, and he dealt with that. Um, I know that before that last bit of storm, they got a uh, load of green. They went down and got some of that green salt. He felt like that would be uh, uh, better. Uh, other than that, I, I think he did a pretty good job dealing with this nuisance. You know, and I'd, I'd like to thank Norm for his work on the so-called hay wagon, which is a lot more, a lot prettier than a hay wagon. <laughs> yeah. And Art was in on that too, helping with a lot of uh, jazz. That's great. I mean, that's um, you know, it's one of those things. Luckily, Norm had been taken off of too much outdoor duty because he had some bronchitis, so he was able to rationalize, spend a little time. <laughs> he also had a lot of free help, and uh, you've seen it, I'm sure. Is it stored at your place now, or is it? It will be, it will actually be stored uh, in the barn itself on the Weissman's. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Great, not on Harring by. Harrington Butch, Road. Butch Robinson has charge of the barn, and he's been room in there for us, and we're going to put it in as soon as we I don't want to take it down and salt it on the road. Right. Sure. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think Norm would let you. And the article <laughs> on the banner was very well written. I think it made it was great to have that article like and make it clear that all the community businesses that helped out. Um, was there a, are you going to be pulling that? 
for yes. the for the uh, penguin for the Winterfest? Yeah, one of my employees has his tractor, and he's going to be pulling up for the penguin okay. lunch. Good. And then, of course, uh, with your permission, we'll use it for Oktoberfest uh, and all the all the all the things, car show, and all that sort of stuff. No, I see it as it's a, it's a community thing. It's not ours. It's um, okay. and if any any community that wants to make use of it. <coughs> Should be able to. Um, so that's all I know about that. So I think we can move on to uh, this new business uh, regarding the intersection. What do you got, Art? Anything? Uh, just a little over a year ago, uh, some business people and truck drivers came to you and said, "We just don't think it's a safe, viable intersection." And I understand that Mark and Bill. Actually, you either went to Mount Pleasure or talked to somebody from Mount Pleasure. I mean, at that time, you said it's a state-approved thing, it's a state, and that sort of stuff. So these two gentlemen spoke to somebody upstate, and they basically said, I'm going to tell you what I tell everybody else, wait six months. If you still have concerns after six months, we will talk about it. So here it is over six months later. Um, a friend of mine, Charlie Jakes, called me about a month ago and said, I just blew and ruined a tire tire and rim down here, who do I talk to? And I said, well, let's let's come before the board because they want to hear about this. Uh, Norm, I can remember Norm specifically saying, we need your input on this. We need to know what that sort of stuff. So ironically, a week later after Charlie did it, I did one, but I didn't ruin anything. It just broke the bead and I had to have it repaired. But um, this is Billy Barney who has the gravel pit that everybody hauls out of, and uh, Joe McGuire, he's in charge of all the uh, trucks that haul the trash out of town, okay? He has documentation for over 12 ruined tires alone, just from that company, so. Um, they at least have anything? No, just uh, we haven't had anything uh, tire-wise, damage-wise, but, uh, you know, just driver complaints, that kind of thing. So it, it's it's not only a nuisance, but it's becoming an economic mm -hmm. problem, too. So we just want to know, are, can, can it be brought up, brought up to the state? It's <clears throat> can I? Uh, Go ahead, please. Okay. So I think... A couple of things. One, we did. Uh, Norm did address some of this, and he ground down the corner as much as he could. But with the tools he has, it's you yeah. know, I mean, he knocked, he took the sharp edge off, and that was about yeah. it. It's the tall one that's causing. Our, our right, right. The second, the second one that's three quarters of the way around that you and I went and looked at. On the bank side. Exactly, and it's, it's the far corner of the bank. The 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 who's it falls right. corner of the bank it comes well. It's in, physically impossible to put a truck through that corner and not and stay in your own marked lane. It's absolutely impossible. You have to, you have to shove people over into the parsonage and the Holland's garage and everything if you have a tractor trailer coming around that corner. Otherwise, that's you're up on that big curb and you blow tires. So you're you're saying, Art, that the the on the main street part of it, people aren't having a problem. It's when you go around on a going. It's a right hand direction. turn going southwest. Well, there right? are some safety issues here. I, I've met trucks with trucks there and. When cars back up behind you, you can't move. I, oh, yeah. You can't move. Yeah, I have had to physically get out, get people to move away from us so that one of us could back up, so the other guy could get out, so the other guy could get around. So there's, there is some safety issues there. So one of the things I had done, and I talked, to, I, I met with Art about it a few times, is I kind of put together. I wanted to, I wanted to kind of document what your concerns were, and not have me do it because I'm not driving a truck. Uh, and I, I can, we can do this any number of ways. We can call the state and I can say, I'm hearing this, I'm hearing that. The, the, the most effective way, I think, is going to be if you guys, and I'm like, even if you do it in pen and paper, I don't care. It doesn't need to be super official. Give me a business card, I'll scan it. But if you can just tell me in one or two sentences what the problems are. Now, I've, I've walked it with Art, and you mm -hmm. were there too, I think. Um, yeah, you were there. Um, and in the rain. So I'm kind of aware of what it is, but just me saying it isn't going to carry nearly as much weight as you guys saying it. So I, I can do it any number of ways. I can try to draft what I think the, the issues are and put it into my own words. Or if you guys can give me just a simple piece of paper, each one of you saying, hey, I represent this business, and this is the problems I'm having. Especially you said you had a, uh, several tires. Is that? OK. Um, we, have a, we have another company that does all our own. But right. soon we bought tractor trailers, and we're going to do a lot of our own. 
knowing that would be really good. I mean, that would be really valuable information because I can, what I did is I kind of put it together, found the old sketches, stuff like that, and I can kind of detail, uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to detail, this is what we started and tried to do as the village. <coughs> this is what we have and this is what we're hearing is a problem and summarize what you guys are saying and then I'll attach all your letters so that it, it isn't just me or the, or the village saying it. This is all the business owners in the area that are saying we have a problem here um, and it isn't working for us. That's what I'd like to do, but I'm willing to do whatever you guys want. I mean, if we want to just make it verbal and I can take notes and put it into a thing, that's fine. I just don't think it's going to be as effective as something in writing that I can submit with this uh, on your behalf, essentially. But it's up to you guys. I think you have Mr. Weaver's bill, don't you? He told me he sent you a bill. He did. <laughs> um, we, that's, that's, that's a tr tricky one because I have photographs of that truck making that and that truck wasn't legal from what I understand. What, was what he was hauling that day was a truck that was much long. He had a huge thing on there that he had to do some stuff in order to. So I believe we already officially denied his claim. But that's my other question is, and I, I just because once you go to the state, the state's first thing is going to be, what are you hauling? You know, are the trucks that are moving trash from Vermont out of state, are they all meet the standards that they're measuring? Weight and length and, okay. I just want to make sure that that's not where they go. Sorry, bud. Because it seems like there's two issues here. And the first one is the bevel, which is just the silliest, you know, that should have should have happened. That, that if, if those were significantly beveled, at least most of that area, it seems like it would probably reduce the tire damage. Yeah, yeah but I think. It's not the bevels. No, I know. It, okay, right. It's not. You're saying it's it's the it's the curve. It's the whole design. Yeah. yeah. The, the mountable curve. The mountable curve is working. It's the it's the secondary curve that they're having the issues on, right? Never pulled the trailer before. No. No, no. That's why we need you guys. Yeah. Uh, just a, a regular little trailer. Sure. Or? Okay. It doesn't track where your truck tracks. Right, 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 right. Okay. When you go around that intersection, in order to get around it, you have to get in the other lane to miss it. I blew my tire because a car was coming. I'm at fault. I'm across the yellow line. Mm -hmm. So you get over where you belong, and you get curve. That brings me up to my next issue. It's the safety issue. There was a kid on the sidewalk with pink hair. I remember as clear as day. He was behind me when I hit it. If he'd have been next to me, mm -hmm. there could have been a serious problem. What's the tire? The tire yeah. And ruined the rim and floor all the smithereens. If he'd, if he'd have been close, he could have caught some traffic. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole design, Grumman North, on 67, you've got a bump out. You lose 240 your row. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Over on the other side. On though. this side. Yeah. Because you've lost two foot that you need to swing. <coughs> Coming out probably the same way. Coming this way. But in order to get around that corner, you've got to mount the curb on Pollen's side when you're going that way with your trail. And then you've got to stay on that lane with the truck so that your trailer just misses the curb. That should never happen. And if there was any, what, I don't know why the whole design was changed. If there was an issue with, what was the issue? Was there ever any pedestrian incidents? Was there ever any? Changed from what? From what it was to what it is. What was, uh, well, what, this goes oh. back 12 years now, but I believe the original concern, this all started even before we were on the board, I think, but yeah. was it that there was an interest in, calm, as in calming traffic? Okay. You know, and, and creating more Stop of a walk, a walkable, um, Stop sign. Well, they don't work so well. Uh, It'll be a lot better. A lot of, at least, I don't know what it costs to build this, but the stop signs would have been a little bit more cost effective than spending the money you did and having to fix what's there. Right. I, I don't know if I agree. Being next to Pangea, and I counted one day, and one out of 36 cars stops there. So no stop sign. I don't think stop signs. And I wasn't on the board then. I mean, this is like 10 years before I got on the board. So I. I, there I there for a while, you know, and the. Uh, <laughs> the the yield sign wasn't even working. If you ever drove down Main Street, you knew I would stop going down Main Street without a yield <clears> sign <throat> because the people that were supposed to be yielding coming in from the New York side would blow through there doing 30 miles. I lived 
two doors down from that corner. They're already doing from there, doing 35 by the time they hit my house. There was no yielding going on. So we had to, and again, this was all designed and put together well before I was on the board, but I, I do understand that but it's, it's not working well for the, for the trucks, but I know the, I know the idea behind changing it was slowing traffic and pedestrian safety. Um, that doesn't speak to the design that came through and what is out there now, whether it's better or worse. And obviously we've heard that it's not better for you guys. And right. yeah. well, One of the interesting things that we found when, when Art and I were talking about it is we went through some of the initial designs that were put forth and somewhere along the line, and I actually have a drawing of it here, that bump out that you're talking about along the bank side wasn't in the no. original plans. It got pushed out, the one that everybody seems to go over. Um, yeah, the big curve wasn't in. That's not in the original. Yeah. That's not in the original drawings. They bumped that out seven or eight feet, and I don't know when that happened or who the engineer. Was. I don't. This you know. is probably actually. That's. I think these are just conceptuals. And Art and I were. So they at wouldn't it. have. The, yeah, they were conceptuals. And at some point in time, that ended up getting moved. And I don't know why. Um, I mean, it had something to do well, with just a highway regulations. I don't even know. But that's where we want to take this and go. This is what There's we were no thinking about. Here, what we thought was now. going to happen back when. Or I think your son attended a meeting, uh, this side. and somehow this that right changed, and, this is, one here and that change is causing this problem. This is, um, you know, yeah, one of the problems. Yeah. I'm not worried really yeah. about the truck drivers' cars because the truck drivers sit there and wait. They have to. Yeah. Right. But then, you, like he said, you're getting into their lane, so. Well, I wait for trucks all the time, and happily do so. That's not to say that. But you're not everybody does. It. I'm aware of the situation. <laughs> the other thing is, it's. I agree that it's not a safe idea that a truck should be having to go into another lane, but it's not illegal for it to do it. In fact, I'll watch Art's trucks or any, just again, because you have to, any truck at the four stop signs up here has to do the exact same thing. So any four corners, that is, that, and there's no curb up there. So if you needed to, you could drive, you know, right onto the right of ways of, so I get, and I, I'm not even, I'm not disagreeing that it's a flawed design. This is some of what we're dealing with. The, uh, the original design also wanted to bring Holton Lane and 67 closer to a direct intersection and actually made it worse. I can't, I can't come down Holton Lane and go to Bennington with a tractor trailer. And I can't come from Bennington and, go, and, and take Holton Lane. Yeah. Holton Lane. I've got to come all the way up here to the post office and go over Depot Street with a tractor trailer. Because there's, there isn't, I mean, it's all high curb there. At the end of whole lane because they put it and that's another one of the bump outs that wasn't in the original that, that, that we don't know where that came from either right they, they put a parking area where i think they should have put the road mm -hmm. well again it, it's there's a mysterious history to all this and i'll tell you it's um we're still in a process dealing with this on a legal level with and it's really unclear you know it it may turn out, and this is going to be the state's determination, if the state determines that that the design does not meet their standards, then they're culpable because they signed they off on the project. Well, they forced some of these changes. In fact, that's right. In fact, they right. denied certain suggestions by the original engineers saying, no, that wouldn't be safe or this, you know. But t t who signed this and who signed what? I don't know. I just know that everything has to go to the state. And I think what Bill's going to try to do with your help is is to attach some real testimony of real business people who are having real problems getting through the intersection. Maybe, may, you know, like you said, that intersection is not getting torn up again completely. Not, not. I don't think in any of our lifetimes. We hope. But if these sections out on that far corner over there, or that bump out over by the bed and breakfast, if those could be removed, you know, and patched back in or something, hopefully at the cost of somebody who's responsible for it, whether it's an insurance company dealing with the engineering firms or whether it's the state or whatever. <coughs> I think that's where we have to go. Because I think that I think the places you're having the issues, changing those wouldn't change the purpose of why they put the intersection in. We would still be able to slow the traffic down. We'd still have pedestrian safety. You're talking about what I see as minor changes, which could be thousands of dollars. Pull that curb back further. Or get rid of it, it but yeah. and make it mountable all the way out through. Yep. Yeah. You know, but it, that makes it create a true real safety issue. You got somebody out walking on sidewalk. I think that's why that's why they have no. the secondary curb there is they don't want to is to keep yeah, right. the, you've got to keep you've got to define the space. You don't have to have a high curb, but you've got to ex 
extend the angle of it. Right. You right, yeah. change that far end of it. Far. Absolutely. Like into the roll. And, it's kind of little and that's, and I agree. The other thing, though, that I am definitely not doing is going to, taking suggestions and making our own decisions and going and changing it without no, no, without agree. somebody up there going, yeah, that's what has to happen. So that's all we're asking. So okay. I'm, yeah. We want you to go back to the state. Yep, and, okay. and I'm fine to do, I'm, I, I totally raised my hand and said I'll do it. So my question to you guys is, do you want me to just take what you're saying here verbally and try to put it together, or do you want to, or do you want to give me something in writing? I can tell you the latter is going to be infinitely more effective, uh, I'll but I'll do either that. one. I would definitely put something together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A typed paragraph yeah. of exactly, of incidences and your just general concerns. Right. And the name all. of the business, because we want to, you know. And uh, actually having the copies of all the repairs you've done to, yeah, I mean, any of those things will add weight to it too. Yeah, I don't mind doing this. I just want to do it. I want to do it effectively so that we get some. It's going to be much more effective coming from that yeah. than us. And I'd be happy to continue to help you with it. I mean, I've got no. No, that'd be with fantastic. That. Would Would it be worth our while asking uh, the state to hold a hearing here, or a meeting? Of I somebody? think I want to get it. That I want to get something. Step, I, I want to get something in writing to them. I want to put this on record that you guys are having a problem because it's going to start the clock ticking. Of we have had a problem, and once you know, and and, and then we can call. I don't know if they assign a case number to it. I don't know how they're going to do that, but we'll have somebody. They'll, they'll be made aware that there's a problem, and we'll have we'll have somebody we can talk to about a specific problem rather than just us picking up the phone and making a call to whoever answers the phone. No, they, but I think making that suggestion anyway. Maybe in your yeah, letter well, saying, yeah. you know, because because it's these people much need to be heard, to, and we want somebody right, down here to hear it. Right. It's it's much harder idea. to put aside. A, talking directly with someone then. Yeah, that's a good idea. If we can get that, you, can you guys come back? If we can get <coughs> that, to actually meet with you. Did, you. did you tell me that the person that did sign off from the state is now retired? Is that one of the problems? I can't remember. I can't remember who it was that called the state. I, well, I know that's true at, I the, that's true at the local. There's so many chains of command, and it had to get signed all the way up to the top because it was federal money that was, you, you know. So, but yes, they've been Any through a couple different people at the local um, district, level. district level, and I can talk to Jim Sullivan. He'll have, he's Jim's he's great about that yeah, he's great about information. So I'll 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 get a hold of Jim and find out, you know, the names that we need to. Because uh, I think I was the one who spoke to the state originally, uh, and and okay. I got all yeah. the information from him. And th they're the ones that basically I think I gave you that information too, right? I, I don't know if you ever called up, and she probably told you. She said she's gonna tell you the same thing she told me. <laughs> Live with it for three months or six months or whatever it was, and then and then we'll talk to you. So. You want this address to? You can you can address it to the village of North Bennington, and we'll and that would be the official way to channel it. I think up to the state. And then, do you have an email or, or how? You have my email. If when I can, probably I didn't bring any cards today, but I can. Uh, I'll write it down. If you guys want, you guys want to mail it to me or email it or what do you want to do? Email, it, email would be ideal, wouldn't it? Okay. Mail. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what's our post office box? 427. 427. Um, do you have everybody's, yeah. uh, these guys' email addresses? Okay. So let me just, I'll write down mine. You probably do, but I'll, I'll write it, I'll, I'll give you guys copies. In the PO box, I have right here. Yeah, it's kind of good. For regular mail. I'd show them, but that would mean you stay already from this place. <laughs> Well, I don't think it's more of a gift, wasn't it? Yeah. 427 North Bennington. Which one am I going to use here? That's right. Yeah, I, uh, I'm sympathetic. But after having gone through, hand that over to the well, gentleman. Oh, you got it. I'm sorry. Thank you. You got it? No, I'm um, After the years of dealing with this, I, you know, I know it's, it's just like I'd like to see the evolution of this because these plans kept changing. You know, there'd be one submitted, then the state come back and say, "No, you got to do this," and it's like it's like that bump out at Eddington just kind of appeared. Appeared. You know, all of a sudden it's there. It's like and and that's not that because of this. That's a tough one, like, right? That's what you're talking about. Uh, that one doesn't allow you to make that right. You cannot stay out of the lane. People are in that slip lane trying to go away. One, one thing that has to happen this spring before anything else is done is that I think we've got to put the stop 
the one coming into the intersection in front of Pollens, you got to put a stop bar further, further back. back to give you swing room there. Yeah. But you know, when we do that, then people then, then can't then see can't to make see the turn, to turn when they come out. I mean, well, then they'll the, the point <laughs> is they'll stop. Is there a truck? No. Yeah. Then they can creep up yeah. and go. But yeah, I mean, it's just. Put it back further so they stop for the trucks. Yeah. Even a you know some sort of thing that says you know stop here for trucks. Trucks. Yeah. yeah. Well, it would have been interesting actually if I think to have left the road a little wider and put a raised bump out in the center that cars wouldn't drive over, but that you guys could just coast right over and still leave a little bit more width. That was in one of the original. I know that. Yeah. You know we've got all that stuff. I've got. <laughs> there was a lot of good ideas, and for whatever reason, you know how committees get together and collectively make the worst. If we were designing it now, it'd be a rotary. I think it there would be a rotary. Now the state would be like, oh, it's a rotary. Now. We'd have a rotary. Every, every time a plan was set and you had to go through five iterations, there were nine departments that had to review it and make their comments and then say, no, I don't like this, change that. I mean, it would. And we may find uh, that somewhere somebody made a decision that wasn't right, you know, but, but where are they now, good. you know? Um, Billy and I want to see the dummy back. That was, yeah. it. It was, <laughs> that was before my time, but I heard, I know about it. I've seen I pictures of it. I so, actually remember that when I was a kid. So if you, guys, if you guys get me that information, I'll put something together, and I'll actually let you look at it, too, just to make sure that when I'm taking what your issues are, I'm conveying them correctly in the main document. And we'll, cir you know, we'll circulate it around a little bit. I'll probably send it to Jim Sullivan, too, just so that he's involved in the loop, and then we'll send it off and see what we can get, what we can get fixed. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for Thank sticking to it. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Appreciate you know, it. I, I really want to say I appreciate your willingness to take the six months or whatever. <laughs> the year. And I, yeah, 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 really. And, um, you know. Don't and I think that our discussion's different now. The discussion is <laughs> narrowed down to the issues, you know, mm -hmm. which are, are a little more specific of the entire plan. Well, which, with trucks with high center of gravities, which my green trucks are, that hump where the sidewalk comes down and then there's a hump, and I don't know why that's there, but your heart goes right into your throat every time because you're going you know. around the weight of the truck, is, and then the rear tires hit that, that bump there rather than when just you turn, it's not a good feeling. No. Right there, right on the corner of the bank. Right on the corner. Yeah. It's it's the bank. It was put, that, that is, I'm not sure that that's in the plans, and that, that was a decision that was made, I think, by the contractor to because there was a drop inlet there, yes, right. it was to stop, it was to, to capture the water, otherwise. Well, that's what the drop inlet does is capture the water. Well, if, if, <laughs> if it's the low point, and if later they find out it isn't because the engineers may be screwed, you know, that, I don't know. That, you, you, almost, you almost try to avoid that. And it's even just, it's that much, but, but I got gotcha. you. It doesn't, it doesn't it's, it's like yeah. the bump out on the, the other side, uh, the bed and breakfast. Two feet, it doesn't seem like much. Two inches doesn't seem like much, but it's a lifetime when you're in the truck. And you uh -huh. have to make those turns. And I, I, no, on that bump out, I see no reason for it whatsoever. Why it was ever... Yeah. To break plows. <laughs> it has no functional use whatsoever. Oh, yeah. And I see them at crosswalks or something, they're trying to make sure There's no traffic. crosswalk, there's no... I know, no, I know there's nothing just, there. That's the whole... Everything in life is angles, <laughs> and the angles are all wrong there. Well, that's that. So solving that problem right there is the easiest one of them all, I'm sure. You pull out, you pull them out. Send the, you know, the plow. <laughs> send the plow down there for you know. <laughs> Move it a little faster than usual. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks hey, thank you very much. <clears throat> Um, <coughs> DRB was going to have a meeting tonight here, uh, but I think the date was warned, warned of the wrong day or something, one day off. Yeah, so, so he, he, he canceled it to make it official and then rescheduled it. Right. Um, and that had to do with a, it, it may be a moot point, it's something that should be changed in the, in the, um, but in the zoning, but from what I understand, maybe that building sold to someone else or... But they may still have a... They problem. may have a, Right.
there's no place to park, even if you're using it as a residence. Well, the back, there's, they've got a access they to the, there. They do have it. Oh, that's They do have legal, they do have a legal uh, width. Between. There is enough width there? Okay. And because we got asked about a curb cut and it was, it was cool. We could, yeah. <coughs> so we'll, we'll see what they come up with with that. Um, fire department, water board. I believe that's all good. Other new business? Well, we might want to mention that we're in the process of doing a budget development, mm -hmm. so people know that. Yep, we met uh, as a working session. We met last Thursday uh, for a few hours working on this year's budget, and uh, we're going to have another working session here uh, at the end of this meeting. Um, I'm encouraged that things are looking maybe a little better than they have in the past, but we'll see when the... <laughs> And uh, you've written your thing for the annual report. Right, I did want to say on the old business. Okay. Uh, just a few words. Let's about move that. to old business. Are you ready to do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, for the past several meetings, we've been talking about the charter review process, and uh, want to invite the public to two hearings about that. Um, once on Tuesday, January 27th, it'll be here at seven o'clock. And the next one is on Tuesday, February 10th, which is the date of our next meeting. So it would be at also at seven. And what's, what's, the, what's the February? The, the 10th, um, the first part of our meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, the well, warning has gone, gone out. Um, I know that there's a copy of the changes, the proposed changes, on the North, uh, the website for the Fund for North Bennington, which is a wonderful website for people to visit in any case, but it's um, northbennington.org under news. And Lori, were there copies elsewhere too? There are copies everywhere. There, which, are, um, there are copies here, there are copies at the Village School, there are copies at Post Office, the live McCullough Library, Powers Market. Um, there are copies at the Town Clerk's Office in Bennington. In Bennington, right. And there are copies in this office. And we'll have copies at the hearing, too. But, and there are copies but, right but, here. But, so if people would be encouraged to look at it in advance, but we will have copies here. So, And then the vote will be on March 3rd which is town meeting day. So it will be prior to uh, the village's annual meeting. So um, it will be an Australian ballot and that will be here at the depot. So it'll be with the regular voting. That's right, that's right. Though um, I believe it, it may be a paper ballot rather than an electronic ballot. Right. Yes. That's what we're gonna do and, and we're gonna have some extra people uh, here. Yeah, we need to have a separate table possibly right. in there. That right. out some of uh, people that we hire ourselves to do that to you. <coughs> do we so, have to provide donuts too? I don't know. Because the others why. provide donuts. I know, that's true. <laughs> the what? So the other voting provides donuts. I don't know if we should provide donuts as well. <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll scale up their donuts. <laughs> we could share the donuts. So how do you, how do you put this on the ballot? Do you have to list we all the changes? Or? Have, David, I will send you a copy. Okay, it's got to be pretty lengthy. That. Actually, I think I did send everyone a copy. We do. Yep. I did a couple weeks ago, but I'll resend that. Okay. And take a look. Yeah, I'm just curious. So, so I I believe the uh, detail will be posted in the uh, voting booth, if, if I understand it. The ballot will have a summary. Okay. Of each of the articles, and it'll be a yay or a nay. And I actually have detail here in, in a hard copy if you'd like to take one with you, David. But I emailed everyone with detail. All right. We'll look. So, so it would be very helpful to have read <coughs> the whole um, text before you come to vote because 
um, there are a, a, a number of changes. Many of them are not big changes, but there um, are 18 articles, I think, that have some change in it. So um, it may be a word or two, and several of them are repetitious because they're mentioned in different articles. But um, that you you summarize that well in the what will be published in the um, annual report, which people will get a couple weeks prior to the. To the, I don't well, know whether they'll actually, receive it before the vote. That's that's you know, a good that's a good point because our village meeting is two weeks later. I have almost everything. I'm waiting for a few things. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking I might defer this year. With there wasn't a whole lot going on, and <laughs> she's taking up so much space with that. Yeah, okay. Right. Mark will do a nice little report. And I will. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I've thought about it a couple of times. It hasn't <laughs> got there yet. So it was to, but it will. It'll be the time has to be right. It won't take you long. So uh, Tuesday the 27th of this month and Tuesday the 10th of February, 7 o'clock. Great. I will not be here next meeting. Um, Come on the 27th. I'll be, yeah. We'll. <laughs> uh, next, any other new business? or old business. And I see, Laura, that on the agenda you put an executive if needed, but do, is there anything in particular that we have to talk about? I don't believe so. Okay. So we don't have this time around. And so I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn, or do we continue this meeting for our budget? We can continue this meeting for our budget meetings. I think that... to continue to Thursday. Exactly. So, um, a motion to continue, is that the? Yeah. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Thank you.